So this is how people look at you. When you show up and you're in a rust bucket vehicle, say it's for lawn care, they look at you like this guy should do my lawn for five bucks. Okay. Now they look at someone else that comes along. They have a nice new truck. It's lettered up nice. They're dressed nice and they, they talk nice. They have a well demeanor to them. They're not afraid to pay a little bit more for your service because they think they're going to get better quality. That guy that showed up in that rust bucket might do a better job than the guy in the fancy truck, but it doesn't matter. That's not what helps sell the client to begin with. Okay, Your appearance is a big deal to do with that. So early on I sucked. Again, I'll tell you, um, the nervousness will go away, but you will find over time, one of the keys that I found was I would tell myself, look, if I don't get this job today, it's okay, because there's five more that I have to bid. Okay, today, I'm going to get some of these jobs, right? Tell yourself, you want everyone, but at the same time, you have to say to yourself, I'm not going to die if I don't get this job. And for some of you who are just starting out, you might die if you don't get that job because you're that desperate to get that work, okay? I'm going to tell you, there, there's ways around that. The whole marketing thing is a big deal. I may as well just spill the beans on that right now. When you, what I talk about is early on when you start, you want every single job, right? Because that's your focus. I want to be at 100 accounts by the end of the year, or I want to be at 50 accounts, you know, by the end of the year. I really want to do more. And next year, say I want 50 this year and I get it, and next year I want 100, and I'm just setting my mind at that. And you're out to get every job. Eventually you learn you don't want every job, okay, because some of them you're not making any money at, and the sooner you realize that, the quicker you're going to actually make money instead of lose money. So know your numbers, set your numbers. It's a whole nother video for that. But the point is, the more you sell, the easier it's going to become to you. Tell yourself in the back of your mind, I do this all the time. I tell myself, hey, I, I don't need this job. I'm here to get it. I'm going to do everything I can to get it because I have an investment in this. You know, I did marketing to make that phone ring. I hired someone to answer that phone. It cost me money to drive out here. I definitely want to put my best foot forward and get that job. But I just tell myself, just for myself, in the back of my mind, it's like, if I don't get it, I don't get it. And what, it, what that does is it calms you down. It calms you down. It makes it easier for you to do your job to sell. Okay? Sell them on your service. All right. Um, your marketing research, very huge. One thing I've learned is uh, my example is going to be my small town. Uh, in my small town, I had like 8,000 people, right? My town's had 8,000 people for 50 years. It just never seems to grow any bigger than that. But I always thought, I'm going to focus hard on my town, and that's where I'm going to build my mowing customers and my landscape customers, so on and so forth. What I found was, they're only willing to pay, in this town, it's, it's like a poverty-stricken community. Um, it's just, just, people just don't make a lot of money in this town. So for them to pay me a lot of money to either mow their lawn or landscape for them just wasn't a reality. I tried to keep my prices up there. I preach to all my competitors. You guys keep your prices up here. Don't drop them. Don't keep underbidding each other till there's no money to be made what to be made whatsoever. What I found out was I needed to market to someone else. I needed to market where they would pay for my services. So learn this early on. This is a big factor in what you do. So for example, my little town. I rarely do landscape jobs in my little town because they won't pay my, my fees, okay? What I need to do to make good money. So what did I have to do? I had to think out of the box. I gotta move away from that. So I started to market out to the areas where there is money. So there's lakes out around us, okay? For some of you, it might be the bigger cities. Maybe you're near, near the cities, you know, like Chicago or you know some big cities in Florida or whatever, where some people have more money. That's where you wanna focus your marketing to begin with, okay? And then, that in turn leads into your sales. It makes your sales a hell of a lot easier because if you want, just an example, $25 or $35 to come and, and mow that lawn, um, they're willing to pay you because they have the money to pay you. You know, it's like beating a dead horse when you're in your town and you keep trying to get that price, but you can't get that price because nobody has any money, right? So that's the biggest thing. Know where to market first off. Know your market. Find where the money is and go get it. All right, that being said, 
to your strategy, your strategy changes a lot because in order to, for you to be a good salesman, you can be the best salesman in the world. And if you keep beating up on this small town of 8,000 people and you think that you're going to sell all this work, if they don't have the money, they don't have the money. So you're doing it all for nothing. I'm telling you guys, I, at one point I was into commercial work all the time and I thought I would die without it. And one year when the economy got really bad back in 2008, I, I can remember bidding, I don't know if it's 30 or 50 jobs, it was something like that. Maybe it was just 30 or something, I don't know. But each one of these took like a week to bid because they were big commercial landscape projects. And I never got a single one. I looked at my wife and I said, baby, we got to get out of this. We got to get out of this business. Last year, things were starting to tighten up and they were looking more for the lowest price type of a thing. I remember days when contractors would call me and say, hey, George, they're at 50000 Can you come in? Can you match that? If you can, I'll give it to you. Them days were all gone. Now, they didn't call you at all. They would just take the lowest bidder. And then pretty soon, it just went down to nothing. So we got out of it. Turns out it was one of the best things I ever did. But then I had to refocus. I'm like, okay, where am I going to do my landscape installs? Because they cost money. Not in my little town of 8,000 people. I tried. I learned. I couldn't. I had to branch out into the lake areas, and that's where I found the actual money where they could afford my service, okay? All right. That being said, now you've done this. You've, you've done your research. Now you've got to market to these people, okay? One thing that has always worked for me, and again, the door hangers work really well for us, amongst many other things that we do, but once the marketing is done, answer the phone. You've done all this work, you've done all the research, you've done the legwork, you've spent the money on the marketing, answer the frickin' phone. You would not believe how many people get busy and don't answer that phone. I can remember when I was out doing door hangers and that phone would ring and I would have to stop and I always carried a pad of paper with me and a pen so I could stop, grab the phone, take the call, write down their information and that would assure them that I'd get to them quickly with an estimate, you know, within 24 hours. And that was always my sales pitch. I'll have a price to you in 24 hours. You know, that was a big thing that I use all the time. Um, answering the phone proved to be a wonderful thing. Um, I can tell you uh, just a quick example of a story. Um, I was with my guys out in the field one time and I was out of the truck for an hour and a half. I left my phone on the seat of the truck. I come back, I had six calls, I think six or seven calls on there. I called those people back, and this was down in Florida. Called them back. Everyone who answered the phone told me they had found someone else already. So just like that, I spent the money to advertise. I paid people to get that stuff out. I paid for the actual postcards and whatnot and the door hangers I was putting out. I paid for all that, and then I didn't answer my phone. So how stupid is that? It's just freaking ridiculous, right? So that's how important answering the phone is. Um, the next thing we talk about, once you answer that phone, be Johnny on the spot. This is a lesson I've had to learn over the years, and it sucks. I've had to tell people, yeah, I'll be up in your area in, uh, by the end of the week or first part of next week. Well, half the time when you got up there, they had already hired someone, okay? Then you'd drive all that way to them people to meet with them. They already had a guy hired, or they had umpteen bids in already. Umpteen, I don't even know if that's a word. But anyway, if it is, let me know down below. But umpteen people, they had already had the opportunity to call a bunch of other people. Now, what would have happened? Now, granted, you're always going to have people that want to get two, three, four estimates all the time anyway, right? But not all people are like that. A lot of times I've told them, I'm like, hey, I can be there in a half an hour. If I leave town right now or give me 15 minutes to wrap up what I'm doing, I'll be on my way. I'll see you within the hour. You would not believe how many of those jobs I actually locked in right then and there because I was Johnny on the spot. And you know what they would tell me? They would say, you're like the fifth guy I called, you know, and you came out right away. I'm signing up with you because they're already sick and tired. They couldn't even get guys there. But if you're Johnny on the spot, your price could be higher than everybody else's. But if those guys don't even come out to give them a bid or they're going to be late with their bids, you answered your phone immediately. You told her you'd be there within an hour or within 24 hours or whatever, how soon you can get there, the sooner the better. Don't even give them a reason to go to anyone else. Okay. Lawn care, if you can Quote the price right over the phone. I'm telling you, do it. Forget about driving out there looking at those properties. You can always up that price if you get there and there's a ton of obstacles. Have yourself covered. Just say, you know what? Uh, and this is just an example. And I, I you know you guys love to throw prices back at me. I wouldn't get out of bed for less than $35 a lawn or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't 
matter what you get. What Everybody's different in every single area of the country. They all have different pricing. But maybe to make everyone happy, I should say it's 50 bucks, okay? I'm going to come over there and I'm going to mow our typical lawns in your neighborhood uh, around the size of your property are run about $50, okay? So I, I, I'd say we're going to be somewhere in there. I mean, for me to, if I had to raise it a little bit because you had a, a gazillion things to trim around or whatever, you know, I can always address that there. And I do that with my pest control. I don't drive out and look at it unless it's a massive company or a massive area, like a big resort that has, you know, acres and acres that need to be sprayed or treated. Um, otherwise, I don't drive out and look at it. If it's a massive, if it's a landscape project, you have to go look at those because there's a lot of obstacles, okay? Lawn care, you don't. There's not that much that you have to do. And I know you guys are going to say, oh, yeah, there is because what if you got a bunch of edging or what if you got a bunch of shrubs to trim and blah, blah, blah. You could deal with that when you get there. Give them the average price. Try and sell them right over the phone. Johnny on the freaking spot. Don't give them a reason to call anybody else. If they're okay with that $50 price that I just gave them. They might not call anybody else. Then you can always drive to the house just to reaffirm that, yeah, the price you gave them is good, okay, when you go to sign them up. And if not, look around and say, well, Mrs. Jones, I didn't realize that you had this much, uh, you know, shrubbery and obstacles and whatnot, and there's a lot to trim around here. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go up to 60 or 65, okay. She kind of understands that because you just explained to her why the price just went up a little bit and why, why you have to have that because otherwise you just wouldn't make any money. People understand that if you're face-to-face -face with them, okay? All right. Um, have good eye contact. Whenever you're talking to them, look them in the eye all the time and listen to them. Be the best listener on earth. Forget about talking. They don't want you to talk. They want you to listen to them as they explain what their problems are, okay? And then it's up to you to present solutions to them and make sure it's something they agree with, you know? Do a lot of you know, yep, I understand. Yep, I agree with you. That type of thing. It goes a long way. You know, making them trust you. You know, that, that's going to be another part of the whole process. But eye contact comes with being a good listener. Don't don't be like this. Like, yeah, she's talking and you're, you're writing your notes and you're really not giving her the old eye contact type of thing. They know that. They see that. They don't like that. So they want to know when they're talking that you're looking at them and you understand what the problem is and you're helping them find a solution. That's what they care about. They don't care about your family. They don't care that you've been on the road for 12 hours doing estimates. They don't want to, they don't care. They don't want to hear it. What you do is when you show up in the evening, you apologize for coming so late. Just say, I apologize. It took me so long, ma'am, but um, I'm here. And how can I help you? That's what they want to hear. Okay. All right. All right. Um, again, building their trust. One thing I do with everybody, I like to joke around with people. So I'm forever in a day trying to joke with them about, you know, something or, oh, yeah, the deer do so much damage, you know, to shrubs or, you know, you just joke with people and get them in a good mood. Whenever a salesman is coming to their house, they're always on the defense automatically, you know, and, and I try to find as quick as I can a way to make them laugh, smile, tell them a joke, do anything, just, just be jovial, be happy, be upbeat when you're there. That goes a long way, all right? Um, solve their problem. Whatever it is, I, am, I was guilty of this going in, and I would find people that, say, if you wanted to go and build a brick retaining wall versus uh, a boulder retaining wall or a timber retaining wall, I would always go in there with what I wanted to do, okay? I would recommend at the time when I mastered all of the, the brick retaining walls, well, that's all I wanted to do, so I kept pushing that, even though they wanted a timber wall. Listen to them, and if that's what they want, give them a price for that. You can always give them an option for something else, and they might switch over to that, but nine out of ten times they've already made up their mind because they saw the neighbor down the road has this beautiful boulder retaining wall and they like it. So you putting up brick is not going to help, so just shut up and focus on what they're telling you, okay? Trust me. Trust me on that. Um, all right, that being said, there's another thing, another customer you're going to run into, and that's where the money is the deciding factor. I freaking hate this. I absolutely hate it when you show up at a property, you're talking to the guy, and it's about a landscape project. You know that guy is the decision maker, okay? He's the outside guy. He's the man. That's his country out there, okay? But then you know what he says to you after you're done with the whole schmeal and you give him the price? He says, 
Well, I gotta ask my wife, you know how that goes. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask you something. This is an example that I do. So it actually was taught to me by my son, my oldest boy, uh, who used to be a car salesman. And he says, well, let me ask you something. Hypothetically, let's say that I came out and I was willing to do this job for free. If I did it for free, could you sign up right now? I mean, obviously I'm not going to do that, but I mean, would you be able to sign the paper then? If I had right on this paper, I was doing it for free. And of course the guy's going to look at you and say, well, yeah. Okay, so then you back it up by saying, so this is a financial issue. Is it that you, you, you don't have the money for this at this time? Or you think it's too high? Or, you know, what do you think? And then put the ball back in his court. Make him explain to you why he's not signing. And he'll say something like, well, it is more than I thought it would be. You know, uh, maybe I'd like to get other estimates and whatnot. Say, okay, well... You do one of two things. You could say, well, yeah, the price, it is what it is, and see a sayonara and down the road to the next one. And you have to learn when to do that too, but I'll get on to that in a little bit. Or you say to them, okay, how about we do this? If you think that price is a little high, what are the things that we really need to get done here? What are the key things that you really like to get done? You know, maybe we can eliminate some of these other little things and get the price in your lap where you feel comfortable. You think we can do that? What? What can you do without? And then you get him to say, well, I don't know, maybe I don't need that much top, so maybe we can just make do with what's here or something. You say, okay, great. That just saved us a whole, you know, dump truck load of topsoil. That's that's $500 right there, you know. And then you just start working with the guy. And all of a sudden, then you tell him and say, hey, well, look at that. We just shaved $2,000 off of, off of the price. Now are you ready to sign? You know, keep him under the gun, so to speak. You spent a lot of money, you did a lot of research, you, you, you paid somebody to answer the phone, you, you paid for the marketing materials, you got the marketing materials out, you've driven all the way out there to see this guy, don't let him off the hook with that, oh, I gotta ask my wife type of thing, okay? And he still might come back and say that, but at least give yourself a fighting chance in there. Get in there and find out what the real problem is. You know, the other thing you can do that, of course, you're not supposed to do, but I do know of guys who did it, not me. But there are other people who have done it. Offer them, how about this? How about if we do a cash deal on this thing? All right, how about if I knock $1,500 off and we do cash? That's got to be a deal closer for you, right? Not that I would ever do that. Know what I mean? So therefore, you could always run that at them. And a lot of times, believe it or not, it works, okay? So, that being said... Um, relax you know and i i can't tell you how much stress it it is to go and do some of these sales and you get out there especially like i can remember going on days where i would bid like six eight jobs a day landscape jobs and i'm like my god i can't land a single one i would come home and i would just stress to my wife i'm like god i don't know what i'm doing you know i'm just i'm not getting these people and now i'll turn right back around the next day and i'll get five out of six you know it's just crazy how that works but the thing that has helped me the most is to learn to find out what the problem is. What's the hang up, okay? Once you get them to trust you, and there's some people you can joke with all you want, and they don't care. They're on the defensive from the time you pull up, okay? For whatever reason, and I don't, I don't understand it, because when I call people to my house, I'm, just, I'm happy they showed up. Especially nowadays, you know, you can call 10 contractors to come. My wife and I were going to put a big addition on our house. Speaking of your local town, I called like 10 contractors, local guys. You can't even get them coming to the house. You know, that's how ridiculous it is today. So that's a big point by you being there. A lot of people know that. They're tired of that. They're tired of not being able to get anybody to the house. So if you show up there right away, half the battle is won. You, you marketed to the right people who have the money. Now, you can go in there. You can be the best salesman in the world. Remember that. And if you market it to people who don't have the money, you wasted all this for nothing. And, of course, you're never going to know that unless you're marketing in key areas where you know there's money. If I, if I focus my marketing dollars towards my little town, I would die here. I would die penniless in my town. I had to learn to think out of the box, and I had to go, I had to travel. That's just the way it is. And some of you might have to do the same thing. All right. But anyway, um... Again, you could offer the cheaper rate to people and eliminate some of the things on there. But keep working. To, don't, don't let off them, 
okay? The last thing you want to remember is don't take no for an answer. You want to know that when you went there, you gave it everything you had to get that. I want you to remember this. You, you're part of the sales team, okay? Right from the very beginning, when you guys design your marketing materials, when you do the research and you figure out where you're going to market, it could be you and your wife that do this, or maybe it's just you, or you and an office girl or associate or a fellow worker, whoever it is. You've got your time that is worth something, and you've, it's worth a lot because you're only given so many days on this earth to live, no matter who you are. So that's the way I look at it. Every day that I spend with my marketing team that we look at where we're going to market next, how we're going to market, it's very valuable. Phone rings. If we miss that call, I am freaking pissed. You do not miss that call. You get that call. Make sure there's a pleasant voice on there. Make sure they like you right off the bat. You don't want to be guys when you're calling up. I'll never forget this one guy. I tried to call a pest company before I started mine to see where they were at with their prices. And I call. I got a guy on the phone and he's like, Rick. And I'm thinking, the fuck is that? Rick. Yeah, I really want to do business with you right off the bat. That's, that's the thought in my mind, you know. Instead, we hire girls that have a great personality, they sound fantastic on the phone, and that's, that's a big step towards getting you in the door. And once you're in that door, then you're the nice guy, you're the guy that wants to joke with them, it's all about them, and you're nothing, you know. End of the day, you want that money, right? So, use these tips to help you get that money. If this video has helped you guys at all, Please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the little little bell so that you get notifications whenever we put out the new videos. We do appreciate you guys watching, and thank you very much.